A warm welcome to our audiences all around the world. Welcome to this next episode of our Telos podcast. Today, as you can see, we are live on set. We do not have a guest with us, but we're going to hear from our very own Mario Singh, who's here with us in this makeshift studio that we have. It's going to be a fun time, and Mario is going to talk to us about the purpose of work. You know, and before that, we never had a chance to do this, but we're going to hear about Mario. Mario, would you tell us? A little bit about myself and also what you do. Sure, bro. Well, I think this is a wonderful time for us, you know, to 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 share and talk a little bit about work. So, basic introduction of uh, myself um, in the family. So, Charlene's my wife. I've got two wonderful kids, right? Chantel and Elliot. Chantel is 13 this year. She's in ACS International at Sec One. Um, Elliot is also in ACS in the entire ACS family. So, Elliot's in Primary Five. So that's family side. Uh, on the business front, I, I'm, I'm heading three entities, three companies. The first company is a brokerage arm, so it's called Fullerton Markets. Now that's essentially a multi-asset trading platform where clients literally all over the world, they, they trade different asset classes. So they can trade things like currencies, stocks, crypto, bullion, indices, stuff like that. Um, the second company is a digital marketing company, so that's called Pipbox Group. Now, in Pipbox Group, we handle things like digital marketing for clients and events uh, around the region. So we've got offices in Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam. The third arm, bro, um, I've always been interested in the blockchain crypto space the last few years. Can't claim I'm an expert at all, but I wanted to get involved in it. Yeah? So last few years, set up a company called IWS Fintech. So formed a good team together. And over there, they, they handle about two to three pillars. So the first pillar is blockchain consulting for B2B entities around the world to see how they can essentially employ blockchain technology um, into their, their line of work. And number two, we do a little bit of crypto uh, proprietary trading on ourselves. And the third pillar that just started this year is to try and get involved in the Web3 space. So we've got a small team in there in IWS FinTech uh, looking to Web3 into NFTs and, and, and the like. So that's the business side that keeps me busy already. Uh, about three years back, my wife and I, we started our own foundation. So this is called Soul Rich Foundation. And in Soul Rich Foundation, we've got three pillars inside uh, Soul Rich Foundation. So, so the first pillar is essentially, we term it as well-being, right? Well-being. Uh, the second pillar is about family. And the third pillar is uh, Christian education. So that was a, there's another whole different story in terms of how we set it up. You know, we wanted to challenge ourselves, bro in terms of what I would call as proactive giving because you know when, when, when we looked at our giving over the last few years um, and to be honest with ourselves it was more reactive you know oh take care of our, our things first and whatever we have left and then we just react so to speak so we wanted something to be a bit more proactive something to be uh, a bit more sustainable that could actually outlast us you know and I think that's been a real blessing in a sense that uh, we've got the kids involved so as an example when we when we do bread delivery the kids come along so they understand the charitable side of things so in a nutshell that is uh the family the business and our charitable arm super and mario i, I know you're also obviously very involved in gatekeepers singapore to tell us a little bit you know what what draws you to gatekeepers and why are you here contributing what you do and doing what you do yeah, that's a great question, man, bro. And I, I honestly felt that this is a, a, a movement or a prompting of the Lord and the Holy Spirit. So, when, while building the companies, and I like, at, at this stage in my life, I feel there's something that I can do to contribute, you know. And, and there were many organizations that were asking me, oh, Mario, okay, we, we know about you, we heard about you. Uh, could you come and serve on our board and stuff like that? And as I was praying, I didn't really feel the peace to want to serve on many other boards, but couple of years ago so this is how I got to know Georgie who's our national president and Georgie is a super networker you know so to speak so there was a period of time he, he came to me and he said well let's go have coffee and that one coffee session uh, I, I was rekindled in a certain sense so I was drawn to it you know, I drawn to the vision of gatekeepers you know to transform culture by the power of the Holy Spirit and that really is is as I go back to our roots, bro, I mean, when we start thinking about it, right, that really is the essence, the reason for being. God must always be the starting point. And, and, and when I got that, I was so at peace with myself. And I said, yes, I'll come, not just come on board. And over the last one year, I've been serving in a, in a may I use the word, a bit more proactive role, 
uh, in helping gatekeepers all right, to, to transform culture all over the world. Super, that's, that's just really, really amazing, Mario, and a great introduction for our audience as well. What do we do at Gatekeepers Singapore? Now, Mario, I mean, obviously, I always joke about you not having much hair, but clearly you've worn a couple of, oh, not a couple, but several hats, you know, and, and you must have a certain way you think about work, right? And that, that drives you, that governs the way you do, do things. That obviously carries a kingdom perspective. So would you share with us today and our audiences, how do you think about work? Yeah. What is your purpose of work? Wow, bro, you know, to, to, to answer this, uh, maybe in a, a, in a bit more lengthened way, right? Just now, I, I found myself saying, you know, in your previous question, I found myself saying, God is our starting point, you know? So and I think that is a great starting point because not many people start with God, right? There are some people out there, okay, everything is about me. I'm very self-centered. And if you think about it, there's technically nothing wrong with that. Look at the entire world now. Everyone is pursuing, oh, we are now living in what we term as a post-truth world. Meaning to say, the, it, it comes to a point of time that everyone is just more uh, self-centered. You know, yeah, there is some truth in the world, but a lot of times it's, I matter more than anything else, right? I'm at the center of my own universe. My beliefs, my emotions, my happiness matters more. And so that's one perspective. And, and, and for me, as a, as a child of God, my reference point, my starting point is always the Lord Himself, mm. you know? And if you go back all the way to, to history and, and when, when God made man, right? And He made him in His image. And that basically tells me that our God is a relational God. That's number one. And it's the first thing that He let Adam do to tend the garden, right? To subdue it, to control it, to take dominion over the entire earth. And through that perspective, that's number one, because I think uh, understanding God's nature is important, understanding His purpose is important. And one of my heroes, at least in this world, in, in the world of finance, is a man called Ray Dalio. I'm not, I'm not even sure if, he, if he's a believer, but he, see, he sums up all of life in basically four words. And he says, meaningful work, meaningful relationships. And I've actually wrote this, I wrote these four words in my, in my latest book, The Magical Rule of Three. I quoted Ray Dalio in there because to me, it is a wonderful summary about life. The only difference is that it's just slightly, I'll use the word topsy-turvy. Instead of meaningful work, meaningful relationships, I tend to look at it from a, from a Christian perspective, meaningful relationship first, then meaningful work. And that's what I mean when, when God created Adam in his image, relation first. And then Adam, go tend the garden and gave him that work. And if you look at it throughout time, bro, if you look at in, in, in uh, this is probably in Acts 9, when, when Paul or Saul had an encounter with the Lord, right? And his first question was, who are you, Lord? Relationship, right? Understanding, who are you? And then the next question, if you see Acts 9, what do you want me to do? So again, embedded there is relationship and there's work. I know it's a lengthy, explanation but i think that's a good starting point because it helps to clarify at least my own thinking there's a lot of times bro i mean we meet people all over the world in our line of work in networking and when you start questioning or you start asking up and they start opening up their assumptions mm -hmm. and they realize you know, a, a lot of life is is fairly empty mm -hmm. you know so i think that's the first starting point i don't know if you have a follow-up question or just want me to, to, to go on again like the starting point has got to be god understanding his nature, which is pure love, understanding his purpose for each and every one of us. So to me, that's embedded in meaningful relationships and meaningful work. Super Mario, and, and you know, Super Mario, some of us might be <laughs> very familiar with that character. Uh, but you know, you talk, um, before you go on, and I would like you to go on, but uh, you know, I caught something there and you said about meaningful relationships first. And it's, I think it's a very fantastic way to look at things, you know, because you know, I, I work a lot with uh, also the mistletoe, uh, family office, you know, and one of the things we always say that a financial relationship is the worst way to start any relationship, right? And I think that's embedded in there is really a kingdom value of one of a person first, yes. understanding the identity, understanding who this person is before we get into a business transaction. The question here comes, you know, and how in a world that's so pressing and so urgent, how do we manage transactional versus relational? How do we manage? time to market, getting things done, KPIs versus relationship. Is there a trade-off, Mario, in your view? Um, and I would like you to answer that, but also take 
on further what you started explaining. Sure, bro. So <clears throat> to go slightly deeper into that, right, I'm reminded of a, a book, or I'll, I'll use the word two books, right? So there's a book called The Abolition of Work by a man called Bob Black, I think. He wrote it maybe in about 1985. And it was a very pessimistic view about work. Oh, all of work is not good. You know, he, he, there's a sentence in that book that says, actually all workers are like part-time slaves. You've got to do the bidding of your boss. So it comes from that perspective, you know. And, and to me, it has a little bit of, a, of Greek thinking in it, in it. And what I mean by Greek thinking, right? You know, one of Aristotle's words was, uh, all work, the purpose of work is to get leisure is to get leisure. So for Greek thinking, the highest form of fulfillment is to, is to actually sit and just contemplate about life. This was, the, this was the mentality of Greek philosophers during the times of Socrates, Plato and, and Aristotle as we speak. Without knowing, so when Bob Black wrote this book in 1985, The Abolition of Work, not knowing that maybe 40 years before that, in I think 1940, C.S. Lewis wrote a book called The Abolition of Man. And in there, he talks about morality. He talks about having an objective point of reference, which is God. You know, so again, I don't think it's an easy way to answer. Like, like how is there a trade-off? I think that was a fantastic question you asked. Is there a trade-off? The honest answer is, bro, I don't know. All I know is, right, when a child of God is saved by the power of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit works in him, you see, the Bible says, right, who has blessed you with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. So, is then now, how then do we live out our life with kingdom values in the entire world? You know, one of the things the Lord has been teaching me in this season is really this word called obedience. And how then do we measure obedience? You know, are we obedient to His word? Because if we study the word of God, we are supposed to do good work. Good work is important, you know, but in what values? So it's essentially about having kingdom values with kingdom values to be able to do good work and from there, transforming culture because work inherently is important. It's just again, are we doing it with kingdom values or are we doing it with the world values? You know, if someone were to ask me, so Maru, what's the difference between kingdom values and, and, and worldly values? I'll probably summarize it like this, bro. Are we doing it for ourselves? for our own purpose, for our own profit, you know, like my profit matters over anyone else. And if you do that, you're probably going to go down the wrong road. That's why I keep sharing with people. Sometimes we shouldn't be asking the question, what do we do? You know, the question should be, what should we do? Is there a moral imperative in everything that we discharge out in the world? Excellent, Mario. And I think if I could sum it up and correct me if I'm wrong, it comes down to the kingdom worldview that we carry, which is, the, really the first episode that we did in Thelos and Thelos again, our reason for being because the kingdom worldview that, or the worldview that you carry affects your thought processes that affects your decisions which affects your consequences right, or the outcomes if I could say so I think here what we're saying if I'm not wrong Mario is that we are looking at what is our priorities in life when we make decisions I think life, the moment you wake up you make choices immediately whether you brush your teeth first, you go for a workout, you know, you have a coffee or tea or breakfast. We make decisions the moment we wake up. And how we make these decisions, decisions are affected by how we think about the world, right? So whether there's a trade-off or not, then becomes what gives us pleasure. What work gives us pleasure. So what gives us pleasure, how, whether it's people or whether it's profit at the expense of people for that matter. Would you say that's a fair, reasonable? I think it's it's perfect, you know. And you know, when you say that, it brought me an image to Oscar Wilde. So Oscar Wilde was, was this brilliant <clears throat> playwright, Irish poet and all that. And he was, he was known as a hedonist. You know, so Oscar Wilde was someone that was always pursuing pleasure uh, to the detriment of himself, uh, essentially, right? Pursuing pleasure. And sometimes if you think about it, bro, that's the way the world is being set up, right? Everything, oh man, there's this Chinese word that always comes from God. I, I had a mentor who always says, right? Oh, 人生要追求快乐, which basically means you know, to the detriment of everything else, I'm pursuing my own pleasure first. Is that the best? I don't think so. I don't think so. Because again, the point of reference is the Lord. What does He want? And essentially, once we talk about relationship first, and the Lord has given us the ministry of reconciliation, which essentially means our reason for being number one here, to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind and strength, to love your neighbour as yourself. Man, if we can get that right, right? Everything flows from that sentence if you think about it. 
then would you really think about about taking advantage of people if that is the mandate of the Lord? We, our entire shift of perception about life will tend to move if we can have that. That is actually one of my personal mandates to share that with you, bro. You know, if, if people were to ask me, so Mario, oh, to tell us what is your reason for being, what's the ultimate at the end of the day? It is that sentence to love the Lord our God, all our heart, soul, mind and strength. I think this was in Matthew 22, right? And when I think one of the Pharisees were asking him, and to love your neighbor as yourself. If we can do that, which is not easy, I'll say, not only will we have true obedience to the Lord, but man, many things will change here. I just want to mention a second thing before I forget. The reason for being for most people. If you look at the soul, you know, one of the greatest lies I feel that's happening in the world today, why is everyone so addicted to activities, to work? In adults, we can, oh, we're addicted to work, la. to kids, addicted to the screens and all that. The key statement I found that has helped me is this. Uh, our soul wasn't meant to be empty. It wasn't meant to be empty. The key thing is, what are we filling it up with? If you are filling your entire soul with the love of God, and from there, the outflow, I think the world will change. The problem is the world has got it wrong. While the soul is empty, we have been coerced to think or we have been living this lie that we need to fill our soul, all right, with work, with activities and all that. And that's where people get shagged, people get burnt out, simply because, ah oh, man, I need to rest. When actually, from a kingdom perspective, it is the entire opposite. It's not so much about resting from work, it is about working from rest. Amazing, amazing, Mario. And, and you know, you've brought up some very key uh, handles there, which again allows me to then remind our audience the reason why we do this podcast and share these stories and these mental models and handles is because we want to share what the kingdom worldview of work is and that work affects our daily lives, you know. And Mario, I want to also take this a little bit further. You know, I recently start to understand, especially in business, we have companies and different things like that to run businesses. and. I understood recently that while something is lawful, it might not be ethical, mm. you know? And that again is a, is a failure of, I think, the systems of the world where we've put certain governance or guidelines around things. But even with that, we still see a lot of fraud, a lot of various crimes that are being committed because the, the heart of the matter, which is really the, the ethics and the morals, is being ignored, I would say, right? Or neglected is the other way I'll put it. So it, it, it's fascinating to me and, and to also understand that the, the Latin word of companies actually is companies, which mm. means together and then breaking bread, breaking bread, right? So then the purpose of a company is coming together to break bread, which brings me to your point about relationship first, and that's powerful, right? So understanding all these various factors, you know, about what's, what's lawful doesn't mean it's ethical, about people and all that. So what, is then how do we see the purpose of work, Mario, in, in your view, you know? When we wake up, right, I gotta go to see my boss who's bad looking and smelly <laughs> and got a bad attitude about him, grumpy, right? How do I see that? How, how do I, how, can you help our audiences? To, I mean, you are an entrepreneur, you own company, so your, maybe your employees might look at your face and, and think something else, right? I don't know, I mean, it's a good impression, I'm sure, you know? But let's say from an employee who wakes up and doesn't want to go to work, what is that purpose of work really? Sure. Let me start by saying this. The purpose of work or in any endeavor that we do with our lives today is to reflect the nature and the glory of God. So that would be the starting point that I would advise anybody, I would share with anybody. The purpose of work is to reflect the nature and the glory of God, period. And that is, if we find ourselves not doing that, we probably have gone off the wrong road. And I can take this as in, when, when I say I take it a little bit further, right, bro? As in, <clears throat> we're living in a world today uh, where people have no sense, and I'm using general terms here, so I don't want anyone to get offended. In general terms, uh, people feel that there is no absolute point of reference for those areas that you talked about. There's no point of reference for morality. There's no point of reference for ethics. There's no point of reference for, for basically these two things. We'll leave it at that. I'll give you one example here, you know. I was reading this, sometimes I'm scrolling YouTube and all that, and, and, and this guy keeps popping up. His name is called Andrew Tate. All right, here's, so here's an example of this guy. So, wow, it looks to be massively successful. I'm going to go and Google Andrew Tate, right? Man, bro, this guy's worth like $400 million, okay? Taking private jets, smoking cigars, having a good life, 
tons of people around him. When I went to read how he made his money, here's the interesting part. Part of what he did was setting up with his brother Tristan. There's a guy called Tristan Tate, he's his brother. You know what they did to make millions of dollars? So they set up a business called My Free Cam, C-A-M-S or something like that, right? And essentially it was playing off the vulnerability of men and women, all right, to say that, oh, if you are lonely, let's come and have a chat. Now, is that the right thing to do? You see, embedded in this value-based question, was that the right thing to do? Is Is the keyword morality? And morality is objective. Morality is never subjective. Many people say, oh, what's right for you may not be right for me. And I don't think that is true because the Bible does tell us, right, that the Word of God has has given you that moral conscience. So when I go back and think about it, you see, the way we look at the world is so different. Many people think, oh, my barometer is the more money I make, the more successful I am. And we have seen that time and time and time again, that is not true. Okay, so coming back, To this particular example, I don't think that is a good example of being successful because embedded was my personal question. It's not so much of, oh, what did you do to make millions of dollars? It's what should you have done? Which is a value-based question embedded in morality. So I know it's a bit of a long answer, but coming back, purpose of work, which is a great question and we need to, to, to answer that, to reflect the nature and glory of God. So again, I'm a big believer in having strong values in any organization in my organization we've got a a a list i call it four of them are value based two of them are behavior based so as an example our culture in fullerton markets six points passion excellence commitment sustainability speed and service and when i break it down the first four are technically governing our values The next two are governing our behavior, speed and service. Is it about behavior? So the way I frame it up for everyone in the organization, because people are different. The first four governs us on the inside. The next two governs us on the outside because people will tend to look at you. And if we do reflect these values based, all right, the purpose does come in. People see you, you're different. You're really different from those people that are out there because it has got to be value based, bro. Amazing, amazing. That's great handles that you've given uh, to me, to our audiences today. I think that's a great way to think about things. And so, just coming to land this a little bit, right, Mario? I mean, for young people, let's talk to young people out there, right? What, having been an entrepreneur, having hired many people, I understand there are about 100 people, 100 something people in your organization. You know, how, what would you give as really handles with regards to purpose of work uh, to a younger generation? The kind of world that they're growing up now is a bit more complicated than the kind of world that I grew up in. And the kind of world that I grew up in is even more complicated than what my parents grew up in. So complication and, uh, and, and toughness, being, things being, having no handles, or, or, it's going to get just worse and worse and worse until the Lord returns. All right? So having that as perspective, the part, bro, that I will always share with younger people, get a mentor. And I think mentorship is important for many, many reasons, right? A mentor is basically someone who has been there, done that, so to speak. But where I want to encourage people is if you find that you're not sure where you're going, because many people, they're just distracted by so many things. A mentor, a slightly older person who's got a a stronger perspective on life can really help to clarify a lot of the muddle thoughts that's having in in young people's minds today. Then of course, the next follow-up question you'll probably ask me, so Mario, how how, how would you then select a right mentor? I've got two or three points to to speak about that. Number one, I use the word credibility. So what I mean by credibility is this, bro. It's like, you have to watch the person, all right? So if it's someone that you would like to model yourself after, look at not so much what he does, but look more on character. Character is always the number one. If someone who has kingdom perspective, who, is, who has had some results, these are the two things I look for. Number one, character. Number two, results. Right? The Lord says you will know them by their fruits. Right? A bad tree will produce bad fruits. A good tree will produce good fruits. So look at the fruits of his life. And fruits are almost always the outcome of a person's values. So selecting a right mentor has got two things. Number one, firstly, have a mentor 
someone who's able to guide you, to shape some of your perspectives, to give you clarity about life. So that's important. The two things of selecting a mentor, kingdom-based values. Mm. Number two, fruitfulness. Super, super. That's quite a lot there uh, for our guys. And you know, if you have questions of any podcast, actually, I want to encourage you, if you're watching this on YouTube, put your comments, put your questions on the comment section so that we can address these questions, whether to you directly, specifically, or through another podcast. Also, do write into our office. Right, you can go to www at gatekeep sorry www.gatekeepers.sg uh, to find us and send your questions in so that we will be able to address your questions. And as Mario talked about, relationships are very important, but relationships is relationships with people. You know, and every person that we speak to, we believe is highly important to us. And your questions mean something to us that we want to be able to reach you and address you. So do send in your questions or comments if you do have. Now with that, Mario, I think we've kind of landed very nicely on today's session. Right, really love to have more of you on this thing, hear more about your heart. Uh, but I think for today, let's, let's kind of land this here and we thank you for your time. We look forward to the next session and we will interrogate someone else. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thank you, bro. Thank you for joining us in this episode of the Thelos Podcast. Always remember your reason for being. See you at the next episode.